second video uh, in a intro to Fusion 360 for SOLIDWORKS users. Uh, we're also introducing this concept of history management uh, and efficiency and modeling also all together for your future self. Um, we went through uh, setting up the prototype model uh, and now we're going to go ahead here and start using this strange revolve approach, which is a revolve with an intersection to keep our modeling very uh, compact. Uh, it's all basically controlled by this revolve sketch. Let's go ahead and continue editing this. Just double click in the history if you wish. Uh, I'm not too interested in the extrude anymore, so I'm just gonna hide that for clarity. Let's have a look at our prototype sketch. So we've got this at the bottom. Looks like we've got a curve, chamfer, and some stuff going on up here. Mm. Okay, so let's go ahead here and start with this shape. Now, I've actually in the previous video modeled to this corner. This is yet to come. So for now, though, we're going to do the chamfer, the vertical, and this curve that's tangent to that line. Now, in Fusion, uh, I can delete this line if I wish, it doesn't matter. Uh, Someone's sketching first. Uh, if I click once with the line tool, you can see it snaps to horizontal or, sorry, horizontal or vertical. If I click an end, it just gives me line segments. To finish the tool, there's a green check or you can just double click the last point. It keeps the line tool active. So you can do various shapes. You can undo all those. Now, another feature of the line tool is the ability to do tangent curves. It comes up all the time, right? So a lathe moving a milling machine running across the surface. So normally, if I pull down vertically, I can click and drag. I can keep clicking and dragging as much as I want with the left button. If I miss it, say I start going, I can always go back to the start and drag away from it. So it normally wants to make a straight line. If I go back, drag away, snap. There we go, ugly. Undo all that stuff. Ooh, wrong button. Let's try doing that here. So again, let's have a quick look. Straight corner, tangency. So let's go up here rolling in with the middle mouse button. But watch out, I don't want to snap onto the middle of that line, which is usually under this constraint. So let's put it somewhere else. Across, straight down, and tendency, and snap to the edge. Nice, easy. Let's have a look at the dimensions. 2.95, 6.5, 2.5, 2.5. So D for dimension, and it's, if we don't want to do the math, 2.95 times 2, 6, and that's a 4 by 1.25, there we go. So if I, one way to do this is to click the two ends, I can also just chip choose the entire length and you can see you can get two directions or a length aligned. So I'm after four here. 1.25 radius, which turns into two and a half, obviously. That goes black, meaning fully defined. Our extrude is still not fully defined. There's something missing, and of course, this guy. You can see here they've dimensioned the center of that from the base. Measurable, I suppose, but it's also easy for a machinist to figure out how far down to go before they stop the bit. Traversing, so from the base here, 15. Uh, it's up to you how you dimension, you can go from the bottom edge or the uh, origin, which makes sense to me. And you can actually dimension to the point in space, 15. 
fully defined perfect now because we deleted the line we might end up with a problem when it starts rebuilding nope it f is smart enough to realize that is the missing part nice so we look in here so we've got this shape so I'm at the top next to the top let's have a look here let's point one up there's no other dimensions here which implies some sort of controlled line or curve pairing or setup or something like this let's go for an OG curve edit the sketch again now it sticks up we're going to deal with that later so what I'm going to do is the same as before I'm going to practice my line so this is what I'm going to try for practice first one curve two curves and done I can do that so let's start over here so using the line tool start some over here get it about if I want to snap it won't snap but if I wanted to line to during the sketch I can say look at this part I can curve it down curve it again and I can actually snap to that guy nice seems to be what it wants so I snapped onto that right there if I want to see what's going on, I can hover and I see, okay, these are coincidence that are hidden. They're there, but if I hover over the part, so can I move this? It's not what I want. It's getting stuck. Keep pressing the wrong button. So an OG curve usually means that the two curves need to be equally sized. So let's try equal. And let's also try that this edge needs to be on the center line, the point here. So it's so looking okay. The other problem is mm, this needs to be tangent. Tangency is quite hard for computers to cope with uh, calculating the tangency. One thing we can do to make their life easier is actually just control the center of the arc, so vertically above. Let's try again. Uh, now we're getting what we want. Now, one thing is I would like to reuse this line, actually, because I'm being efficient. I can delete this constraint here. And, uh, no, it's almost there. Get rid of that guy. I can drag this down and touch it. Nice. Now, this part is controlled by that tangent, that uh, constraint we did before, but we need a tendency here as well so we can touch that everything's looking good do we get the, conf the right behavior yep so now once everything's running properly point one yep finish the sketch oh bit of a problem the thing is not sticking up far enough. The, the the first extrusion. Can we adjust it? Because we're reusing our sketches over and over and not kind of stretching way out on history land, we can actually just adjust this because the logic still works. The sketches are historically correct. So if I adjust this guy now, if I pull this away, it comes away from go to object but now all I need to do is pick this top guy so previously we had attached this now it's just this and you think oh, that didn't work hold on we have to add that to our intersection so again I'm adding this little sliver on and all of a sudden we have the right stuff looking on I go to front and see what I've joined onto. Oh, nice. Looking good. Fully constrained. That's not bad. Next. The cutouts are controlled by this one arc, interestingly. 
So 17 and a half. Looks like it's lined up with this. I know it is. So it's lined up with the top here. Now it's 0.1 millimeters. If we look at this, one of the things we might want to do is make sure that we don't get anything the center of the arc. Just need to make sure we don't get a hook. We'll talk about that over here. Let's go ahead and adjust our thing one more time. Can we reuse this? Why not? 17 and a half. Now, it's tempting to put it over here where the other sketch is, but the other option is actually to put it on the other side because we're going to use this for a new uh, feature. Now, size is 17 and a half, 17 and a half, 17.5. It's the diameter suddenly. So we've got this cut we're going to use. This is not a bad thing to have, actually. It shows you the size of the cutting tool. So for maintenance and all the rest, or work placement, it's handy to have. Let's put it on this edge. One, okay, so it's a half millimeter out. So we want it to be out here somewhere. Let's pull it out. And now we can dimension that. So dimensioning from the center line. Now, I don't want this diameter. I can right click and turn off diameter here. There we go. Now, what is this value? I can type it in. But I should use what I have here. What if I just say it's this value, which is, oh, D14 divided by two. Then it turns into exactly touching. It's not what I want. Double click to edit. How about plus 0.5? Huh, nice. So it's fully defined again. We've got the cutting tool. Problem is, we're gonna do this here, we'll come back to this later, but this is the center or the maximum size of the arc here is right here. We're gonna end up with a small curve going the other way. Whatever, we'll fix it later. Just make sure it works. I want to make these cuts. Let's do that. We'll pattern them later or something. That's my cut. Let's try, you'll notice this is going negatively because it's going the positive ends on the, the tr on the view cube here if we want to go positive that's fine you'll notice it gives us a preview how far to go mm, distance oh nice now this is wrong of course you can see what the problem is but for now it works I'm gonna hide the sketch both of them at once. Gonna probably want some sort of mm, pattern here, probably a mirror. We can pattern bodies also on features. How about that cut? Objects, mirror plane, long hold. And Right for if you open this up, this little eye it tells you what's going on. So I'll just give it a go. Identical, maybe. Oh, that's not quite what I had in mind. We're missing our little in between rib. Now it's tempting to just go ahead here and rebuild this part. All right, we can do a, a, a little extrusion. So, for example, it's tempting to just go ahead and pick this part here, rebuild all that stuff, but then we end up with problems around where it joins. We want the cut to work first off. 
maybe we can adjust this. Can we start, oh, with an offset? 0.5. Oh, that works. Nice. Now all we need to do is pattern that. Can we do features again? Anything circular will do. We want four. Hey, nice. Looks good. Problem is, there's always problems. If we look at this guy, we see this tiny fillet here. I have to add the fillet. So I have the fillet tool F. I can start picking lines. The problem is sometimes this doesn't work. This pattern, the approach we've taken for the first cut, this guy right down here. Uh, what I want to do is introduce a new way of doing this, more robust. Uh, we don't have to break anything here. We're just going to readjust how it works. So the advantage of what we're about to do also includes things like fillets on the inside corners of things and all the rest. So let's do it in a different way. Let's go back, step our history back. Instead of extruding a cut, can actually do a new body. And you think, oh, really? There is an advantage to this. It replicates the cutting tool a little bit better. So we might even know how big the cutting tool is, 10 millimeters. It also allows us to because we're making a new body here, we can enter, we can kind of stick a little extra bit in here. We can do the fillet first. So let's do a fillet on this body, the cutting body. See, it's point, I think it's point one or so. Just go with the standard tangent G1, all the rest. Say, okay. Things might break a little bit as we go along. Oh, no, no, it's smart enough, is it? Because it was a feature. It's doing the feature, but instead we want the bodies. All of a sudden we get the fillet. We end up with bodies listed out. So you can see it's not doing anything to our part yet, the two bodies. We can go even further. Still doing the feature, let's change it to bodies. You might have to press control or shift to get two of them. Everything else is the same four again. We have this monster <laughs> set of bodies, but in a way these are negative bodies. So what we can do is actually use a combine here. So let's do a combine. Target body, which is the body we're going to cut bit itself. Tool bodies. Uh, we should be able to draw a line around them. A uh, box from the upper left to the lower right, everything encompassing. Feet. Everything's highlighted. Correct. Cut. Do not keep the tools because we want them to just disappear. So not only have we done a, a very robust uh, pattern here with bodies, nice cutting tools. So this this will fail way less often. Um, we also have the ability to add things to the body before the cut happens. So you're wondering, well, yeah, so what? If I go back to my original extrusion, I can do strange things here. Like, so for example, I can adjust the taper angle. Let's say it's five degrees. When I, when I traverse my history all the way to the end, we will see that we now have five degrees. It doesn't work. There's a reason they don't do this, but you can see what happens. So let's go ahead and undo that. I'll just double click here. 
change the taper angle to zero. There we go. Modeled buzz drive two, almost. Hold on, what's missing? One little last piece. Uh, this. like a corner so let's do it one more time I'm gonna do a rectangle R for shortcut I'm gonna do it off kilter equal for a square eight millimeters up to the corner oh hold on I need to make sure it's straight first let's put the corners vertical or sorry, horizontal. Anyone will do. What's going on here? So half a millimeter in point, sorry, five hundredths in. It's five hundredths across. We need an extra line. So. Oh, uh, line. Shortcut L. Make it a construction line. Which one is which? That guy. The problem is when we do this, it's going to be overlapped by this edge, which is where we're aiming for here. Another way to do this, delete that, is to actually do a point. So let's put a point on both sides. Get them correctly arranged, vertical. Dimension those guys. Let's see here. Now we want that to be. Uh, hold on, I'm getting this wrong here. Point five. And 0 0.05 in. So let's go ahead here. If I double click get the whole thing, pull it in. Sometimes because it's solving, it might be a little hard to pull. Get that into the right spot. 0 0.05. So let's dimension that. If I <laughs> use it correctly, getting all sorts of stuff pre selected here. Hold on, escape. Uh, it's not fully constrained here. So little pencil still going. So what I, what can I do to constrain this? Uh, something simple, maybe just put this here. There we go. Sketch this in one more time with the original revolve. If I hide them, the full view fits. There we go. How are we looking? It looks right. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.